relevant, reliable, and researched. This is Experts on Call, the show focused on delivering leading-edge news and information on today's most beneficial products and services. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Welcome back to Key Pacific's Talk About Strata. I'm Sterling Fox, joined by Vancouver Province columnist Tony Juventu. Mr. Juventu is also the executive director of the Condominium Homeowners Association of British Columbia. And Tony, in our opening segment, we, uh, we talked about Brenda in New Westminster, who kindly shared her email with us uh, about her problem. She has a strata uh, a unit that she doesn't live in. It's occupied by a tenant. The washing machine had a flood. She She's on the hook for $10,000, which is the deductible that uh, the building has declared uh, for that uh, mishap. So that's a pretty steep deductible. You were hoping that Brenda had a, an individual yeah. homeowner's policy that would mitigate her having to pay it. But how does that deductible figure get arrived at? Is it the insurance company that says, okay, you're stuck with this? Or is it the strata council that applies for the policy and decides in advance what the deductible is going to be? Well, it's an interesting question, you know, and it's really an important question for owners and strata corporations to ask and potential buyers to ask because the deductible rate is an indication of the number of claims or the type of risks the strata has had in history. And so even if it could be a new development, might only be two or three years old, um, and maybe there have been a number of defective washers and dryers in the building, and maybe a number of the washing machines have resulted in a number of claims, um, what, what happens is as your claims increase, your risk increases for the insurers. And the and premiums so you're going go up. To see, well, the premiums go up, but more importantly, the deductible rates go up for okay. things like water escape. And so you may start at a, a rate of about $2,500 or $5,000, depending on the bill the type of risks associated. You know, if you're a 300 unit building um, and you have a swimming pool and you have some other public liabilities, the risk, the chances of an insurance claim each year are probably fairly high. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, there, so the, the insurance company measures that risk and establishes a deductible in addition to what your policy rates are. Uh, so the more claims you have, the higher the rates are. So it's an indication there may have been claims, uh, claims history that's pushing up the deductible rate in this property. Um, but we see deductibles that are 25, 50, or even $100,000 for water escape in buildings that may have five or seven claims a year as a result of a variety of things relating to water claims. And, and, uh, and older water, buildings... We, water escape. I have to stop escape. you just for a second. It's yeah. a euphemism for a flood, yes? It's, it, well, it's a flood, but it's not flood in the sense that a river has overflowed and flooded the building. But somebody's it's bathroom, a, it's uh, an, bathtub it, overflowed or it's whatever. It's called water escape and in insurance policies. It's an internal flood caused by a failure somewhere. As opposed to a leaky roof. As opposed to a leaky roof. Uh, now, a leaky roof, um, if it was something that was not maintenance related and was a sudden loss, um, you know, a drain plug causing a, uh, a sudden overflow and damaging the building, that may also be covered on the insurance. Okay. But if it was a maintenance issue, it's quite possibly not going to be covered by the insurance policy. Oh. Right? So maintenance issues, th these are insurances about sudden losses, things that aren't, aren't anticipated, um, uh, perils that we cannot um, account for. We can't predict an earthquake. We can't predict a flood, a fire. We can't predict a failure of a pipe in the building. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what the insurance is there for. But maintenance issues are a separate item. So those deductible rates are really set by the conditions in that strata corporation. They're going to be set by the insurance company along with the rate of your insurance. So every year when the strata corporation buys its insurance, um, they need to get out there well ahead of their renewal date, look at what they're getting coverage for, the cost, the deductible rates, and shop around. I was going to say, yeah. shop the marketplace because the marketplace. Uh, it's a competitive industry, isn't it? It's a very competitive industry. And remember, insurance itself is actually a commodity. It's bought and it's sold. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of insurance, of course, is it raises profit for shareholders. Well, insurance companies don't want the risks any more than homeowners want want them. They don't want to have to play, pay for claims and floods and for all of those things. So, so the insurance company sets out and gauges what its risks are going to be based upon its capacity of insurance and reserves. Well, you know, it's an interesting perspective that you bring to this program because you live in Estrada. You're the executive director of the Condominium Homeowners Association, and I, across the desk from you, don't live in Estrada and never have. But as my life goes forward, you know, life changes and uh, brings about all sorts of interesting changes that one never anticipates. And so I'm learning like crazy here. And so if I'm shopping 
for a strata and for the first time perhaps and 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 in the course of doing my homework i ask the sales agent uh what's uh, what's the insurance on on this building like right. and and what's the deductible if the sales rep tells me the deductible is like brenda's case say ten thousand dollars versus say a hundred thousand dollars my instincts my little red flag should go up at at a high number which probably indicates a strong claims history coming from this building that I'm interested in buying into. And that should be a warning of some kind, shouldn't it? Well, it's certainly something you'd want to investigate more. Insurance documents are one of the records that are available to owners. Um, and every year when the Strata Corporation reports on insurance to the owners at the annual meeting, they generally provide a copy of the insurance because if you're the homeowner, um, with all the stratas that I work with, you know, the best practice is make sure a copy of the insurance policy cover page showing all those rates and deductibles are given to the owners every year because the owners only can buy a deductible rate on their own homeowner po policy to cover that ten thousand sure, dollars sure. if they know it's ten thousand sure, dollars, right? right? Of course, yeah. But if it's jumped up from twenty five hundred to ten thousand and we didn't tell the homeowners and the homeowner turns around to not have enough insurance to cover that additional rate, we have some potential problems here. So as a strata corporation, we need to inform the owners. Those documents, those insurance documents are available through the agents um, of the owner um, as a potential purchase document. They might be things you want to look at before you purchase a unit. And you're absolutely right. If the deductible is twenty five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, um, it's certainly an indication that there's a problem in a history of problems. Mm. Um, they they can also be related to older buildings. You might have a building that's twenty five years old. They've had a series of leaks because the pipes need to be replaced. Um, the deductibles jumped up to twenty five thousand dollars. You look at it and you say, now this is a big risk, but then you find out they've just redone the piping in the last six months. Right. Right. So the risk has been removed and likely in the next two to three years, the deductible is going to come down. But beware if something happens to your unit. You know, if you have a 50 gallon fish tank um, and it gets knocked over um, in the unit and floods out several units and there's an insurance claim, you're still paying that deductible. So, you know, you need to really consider what your risks are as a consumer. Oh, you used a great word there. You used the word beware. Caveat emptor is how I learned it back in high school. Buyer, beware. But you know, Tony, you know, we get so darn excited about the prospect of a new place to live, and some of these condos are pretty spectacular, offering just drop-dead gorgeous views, and I mean, all this stuff. There's a ton of homework to do, regardless of what your next real estate purchase is going to be. And in the case of a, a buying into a strata situation, I would say the, the homework is, is, is seriously more than buying a detached single-family residence with no strings other than can you afford it or not. Well, and you remember, when you, it's like buying into a big family. When I buy into a condo, um, I'm buying all of the joint liabilities and risks right. that that big family has. Right? I'm not just buying a single detached solitary unit with those isolated risks. It's all of those other joint issues. And, and some strata corporations are literally five, six, seven hundred units. Mm -hmm. And you have all of those shared risks. And those risks, ultimately, you know, you may have a risk in another building in that strata that ultimately might affect you on things like insurance sure, deductibles. Sure, of course. Right? Yeah. And so you also need to think as a buyer when you're moving in from an insurance perspective, um, what are the things... I have to insure in that strata lot that weren't part of the original construction. Right. Most units um, come with a basic standard form of construction. Um, so they'll come with carpeting and lino in the kitchens and tile in the bathrooms, a specific set of kitchen designs sure. and standards and all those things. But betterments are not the responsibility of the strata corporation to insure. They only have to insure for the fixtures installed by the owner-developer as part of the original construction. So betterments or improvements, as many of us would like to think of them. For example, and I know this because you uh, alluded to it moments before we turned the mics on here, in your own strata right. residence, you've replaced the original carpeting with a nice hardwood floor. Right. So any damage that comes to you, to that floor, because it wasn't part of what you originally bought, you're on the hook for it 100%, aren't you? Well, if I was in my own residence um, in a scenario where I moved into a penthouse unit, let's say, for example, um, it, you know, it'll be advertised hard to hard, wall to wall hardwood flooring, and we have upgraded jacuzzi tubs, and uh, the kitchen's been renovated, and now there's all solid oak cabinets, and all these types of changes that have been done, they weren't part of the original construction. Okay. 
I have to insure for those separately if I want to insure for them. Oh, okay. So if there's a flood and the hardwood floors are damaged, um, depending on the insurance policy, because not all insurance policies are exactly the same, but depending on the insurance policy, there may be no coverage for those betterments at all, or the coverage may be only what was originally there. Based on your years of experience, um, would you recommend that a typical condominium owner purchase some additional insurance to cover him or her in their unit uh, beyond what the strata coverage already offers. I would absolutely insist that every condo owner have a homeowner policy. A homeowner policy... It's not mandatory, is it? Well, it's not mandatory, and it's not mandatory because the strata corporation has no insurable interest in my personal risks. Okay, right. right? The strata is responsible to insure its obligations, but not my personal obligations. Sure. And that's why it's not mandatory. Um, And so, you know, I may have a valuable art collection. Mm -hmm. Um, I may have betterments in my unit. I might be in a scenario where my unit's one of the townhouse units next to the pool, and I have higher liability. You know, I might have a variety of issues. Absolutely. Absolutely, I would say it would, should be mandatory almost that every homeowner has to have an insurance policy. Uh, ultimately, if you don't have an insurance policy, though, it opens a wide door on a risk. The minute you have that flood and you're faced with ten or a $25,000 deductible, you're going to have to pay it. Mm-hmm. And you'll have to write a check out of your own bank account or the strategy is going to come after you. Or you call your insurance agent and say, we've got a little problem here. Get ready to write a check. Well, (laughs) hopefully... In which case, you're off the hook. Hopefully, you have a good insurance policy and you've consciously reviewed your policy. You know, when you're the homeowner and you're going to have um, a homeowner policy to deal with the Strata Corporation, take the Strata Corporation policy with you when you're buying your insurance. Interesting. Then the insurance broker can see what the deductibles are. You know, are there gaps that need to be filled in on your homeowner policy that the Strata's insurance doesn't entirely cover? You know, there are, there are a number of issues. Um, and, you know, we should, you know, as you're going through all those things, it really helps to reduce your risk as a homeowner because you always have to remember in Estrada, you're sharing that risk with everybody else. Tony Juventu is with us from the Vancouver province. He is their Strata columnist and also the executive director of the Condominium Homeowners Association of British Columbia. I'm Sterling Fox. This is Key Pacific's Talk About Strata. Lots more ahead. Stay with us. Delivering relevant and beneficial consumer information. This is Experts on Call. And there's more still ahead on AM 650.